happy Tuesday, everybody. Oh my goodness. Um, is this our first Tuesday in December or is this the second one? This is the first one. Okay. Well, happy December. Happy December. I know. Isn't it so exciting? Has everybody got their Christmas tree up? Uh, mine is actually up this year. Last year, it did not make it till like the 20th. So, yes. And then did you decorate it when you put it up? No. I didn't think so. I think I was going to say the tree made it up, but it did Ted not. Ted went and got it out of the storage, and he put it up, and it was pre-lit, and that's how it stayed. So this year it's fully decorated. Um, Chris and Lena came over with little baby Leo and helped. Um, yeah. Yeah, we were putting the ornaments on, and he was taking the ornaments off. And clustering them <laughs> yes. together, I'm sure, yeah. And it's yeah, starting it to good. feel like Christmas here. Um, it's cold. I'm, I have a blanket on my lap with a hot hand stuck to it, so I have a heated blanket on today. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. Yes, the weather has arrived, definitely. All right, today we are going to have so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, thank you guys for being here, showing up. Yeah. It was like, thanks for showing up. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> thanks for showing up for us because, yeah. I mean, you're why we well, do we're this. Happy we to show up for Yeah, them. we show yeah. up. We are happy to show up for you that we have people to show up for. Yeah, I know, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we love to share all of our um, love for painting and DIY. So um, that's what we're here to do today is to talk to you about DIY. Um, we generally do a lot of stenciling, but that's not all the DIY. In order to stencil, you need to know how to do backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to use your brushes. You need to know how to use your paint. You need to know how to finish. You need to know how to prep. So we're here to teach you all of those things, and today it's brushes. Yes, and <clears throat> if you're new to us or if you've been here for a while, we want to remind you to head over to our YouTube channel, so hit the subscribe button, mm -hmm. and then a little bell will pop up, and when you ring that bell, it will notify you when we go live on Tuesdays and then when we add new tutorials whenever they may be and we have all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I'm going to share with you guys some brush cleaning tutorials. So we are talking about brushes know. today. We are having a brush sale today. I'm going to share the link for you and then um, and they're marked through right? and they're marked yeah. through. Yep. So no coupon needed. No coupon needed. Yep. It's marked through. And um, we already have a ton of questions. I asked for, I, I kind of like pre-primed pre us. Pre -primed <laughs> us for questions. So I went ahead and um, asked for questions and we got a lot. Yeah, good. So we can right. kind of get started if you're ready. Let's do it, guys. All right, so I wanna start this brush conversation with a little bit of what not to do with your brushes. Okay, so I have my um, brush um, collection right here. This is what that looks like. Um, that's what I would have stocked for me when I was doing all decorative painting, not using stencils. You notice there are not a bunch of dome brushes in there because um, I wasn't stenciling back in the day. So, but um, the best way to store your brushes is with the points up. So in a cup, in a glass, in a container, like something like this, you want to just keep your brushes bristles straight up and if you have a bunch of dome brushes, let me grab Persephone over here. She's heavy. <clears throat> if you put your really nice brushes in with your dome brushes or especially with your foam brushes, then what will happen is this will get set in like this mm -hmm. and this will damage yeah. your brush. And so you really wanna keep these kind of bulky brushes separated from your fine brushes. So if you have fine brushes, keep a little bit of space, maybe a different side of your brush container, however you're keeping them. Um, something that we do, you can also lay them flat. Mm -hmm. um, we can store our brushes in something like this, and that's very successful as well. You just don't want that tip to be damaged in any yeah. way. Dome brushes, you can set them on their heads forever, and it won't matter, but regular brushes, the ones that you do the fine stuff, matter okay so you want to be really careful about that okay and so that's how you can store she's going to share a link here is going to share a link about how you um how to do the the um cleaning of your brushes and then i want to talk about what happens when you don't clean your brushes this happens dustin can you get that <laughs> i'm going to do a magical thing right down here everybody listen ready your brush should never sound like that it should never knock on your door this one is stained and got lots of glommy stuff all in there. You need to know how to wash your brushes. So definitely head over to that link when we're done and go watch how you clean your brush. If you need a rescue, I can't remember if this is in that video or not. If you need a brush rescue, this is my um, isopropyl alcohol just in a container. This is one of the most useful 
um, things to have around is a little container of, okay, I'm running out or why are you being stubborn? Okay, we're gonna figure that out later, pour a little bit out. And then watch what happens here when we get that brush in that alcohol. This has not been cleaned well. It's already releasing color. I could base coat with this brush once I get that all out. <clears throat> That's a lot of color. Notice how I am not going on the tip of my brush. I am on the back side of my brush. I'm not ever going to mess with the tip of my brush. Never, never, never. So you want to be really careful with your brushes. So I would do that and I would loosen all of that material and then I would rinse it out. And let me show you that really quick because if you don't pop over and see that other video on cleaning brushes, you're gonna to need to know this. <clears throat> so if I had my bucket, what I would do is I would take my brush. It's really easy to be like boom, boom, boom on the, the head of the brush, but I'm actually going to put it on its edge down there. So I just lean my brush way back and tap it, or you can swish it, or you can push it against the edge of your water. Okay, the edge of your basin. So that is how you're going to rinse out your brush. And then before you get ready to wash it, you're just gonna take it out and you're gonna set it off to the side, not on its head. So you never wanna do that with these brushes. Ever, ever, I know, right? <laughs> Carrie just went, oh. Do as we say, not as we do. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> as um, we show. <laughs> the dome brushes are fine. The foam brushes are fine. Mm -hmm. um, you never wanna do, and even really, the white wonder brush could be fine like that because it really is a different kind of brush but the rest of these brushes you keep them off of their yeah. noses okay so we'll pull that out um tina asked does it matter the percentage of alcohol um i don't think so i think the stronger it is the better it will um take out but i haven't played with that so it's a good question but i don't know the exact answer i haven't tried <clears throat> yeah 91 works Try the 70 or the whatever that other percent is. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, then get some 91. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So we have brushes on sale. We have not had very many brush sales because supply has been mm -hmm. ridiculous. So um, if you want to save on brushes, this is your opportunity. We actually have good stock of almost everything that's on sale, but there are some limits, so be careful. There's one of the sizes of, I think is it the three eighths? The three eighths, yes. Three eighths is not here yet. It's on its way, so. Okay, what kind of questions do we have? Let's start with questions. Um, let's start with questions. So the first question, let me find it. Um, do you want to talk about a specific brush or do you just want me to ask a question? Um, let's answer questions. Okay. Um, Tina asked about the Clearly Amazing Glaze brush. Okay. Um, how do you use the brush? Okay, so that is this body of brushes. So they come in all these sizes, um, and they are an amazing brush. Okay, there's a bunch of things that you can do. I've got some paper I'm going to paint on today. I'm going to just use black paint so it shows up. Shove all these... What is that? Thank you. <laughs> we were teasing Steve earlier. We were saying that we were going to use clear paint <clears throat> because he has to do the editing and make sure things show. Let's see if I have, oh, sorry, lots of noise. All right, we're just going to use one of these. Oh, I broke a foot off of my guy. Oh no. Okay, well, I'm going to put him down here so he doesn't hobble away on the table. That will glue right back on. So I'm going to get out some black paint. And we've had a couple people asking about the cleaning of the brushes. Check mm -hmm. out those videos. We do use a, um, a ginger a grater, ginger grater mm -hmm. for a dome brush, but we very specifically show how to do that, how not to do it. You, you don't want, so your brushes um, should last you. I have um, rat buckets, which that didn't pull off of there. Brushes tend to go through lives. So this is a um, filbert dry brush, which is very similar to the brush we're going to show in just a second. Notice he's fluffy and furry. Okay, so what's neat about this is he doesn't, now he doesn't make pretty strokes anymore. He doesn't make concentrated, like, effects anymore. But now he will make good slip slapping, which is where you kind of do some sloppy painting. He will make good fur. He will do a lot of different things. Don't throw your old brushes away. They become something else. 
So when they're brand new and super sharp like that, then they're gonna do a different job than when they get super fat and fluffy. That's the, this is basically the same kind of brush. It just got used a lot. <clears throat> Okay, um, the Clearly Amazing yeah. Felbert. So we come back to here. Um, the big brushes are incredible. Um, I like them in the Patty's Favorite Dry Brush or the Oval Glaze. They're basically the same family of brush, just slightly different material. This is a softer brush and this is a little bit firmer. This is cut in an oval and then this one is shaved. So they're kind of similar, but they have differences. So you do want to be careful. When I very first started painting, I went to um, Michael's in California, um, where I lived at the time, and I went and bought brushes. And I bought the ones with the really big long handles. Those are oil painting brushes. Didn't know any better. <clears throat> the one thing about our website is for DIY and for decorative painting, I have personally curated every single one of the brushes. They work, they're legit. They do their job perfectly. They make life easy. So like there's a hodgepodge of them. I don't just have like one brand of brush. I use all of them differently because they work. And that is, even if you don't need any other information from me, if you go to the website, studior12.com, and you go to the brushes, then you can see all the brushes that we have listed and you'll know that they all work. So that's kind of a neat thing. So get them on sale while you can. Okay, so... I would use this brush for big painting. Obviously, it's a big brush. Okay, so you would pick up your paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring this board up here. So this makes an actually really smooth base coat. A little bit of water in my brush. And you can use it for varnishing, you can use it for basing. You can use it for washing. You can use it for all that kind of stuff. And then when you get ready, it looks like we're still out. live on YouTube, Steve. Yeah, I'm just I'm not on Facebook. Right now. Um, okay. Okay. Just one moment here. Let's pause for a second. Okay. You want me to pause? Okay. All right, guys, sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, <clears throat> so now that's how you would use if you didn't see that. Um, would that be recorded, Steve, and they could see it after by going back? Um, you may I do would it probably again? do it again. Okay, let's do it again. So this large um, oval brush will, is great for basing, varnishing, um, washing colors in the background, doing like some ombre effects and stuff like that. It does a really, really good job of splaying out the paint so it's not bumpy and um, just collected. So it's really good when you want some smooth stuff going on. So that is, and it really, if you can um, get this down shot, it really, let me get a little bit of water in there, splays out quite big. You can get it to be really kind of a big old brush and then it'll even do this little cupping action which can be really cool for like highlighting the tips of flowers and stuff like that. Let me show that on paper. So I'm gonna splay that out and then it cups, okay? And then you can just by dragging just the tip only, you can get this wonderful technique that is just, 
if you had a big flower that you wanted to accent, or some flowers would be really yeah. great for that. You can pull it out from like the middle of your flowers. And then that's shading and antiquing and distressing and see how that made just the lovely little flower shape. Then you could flip it over on the other side and come back from the tip of your flower petals and you could highlight them. And see, I'm not even anchoring, I'm not doing anything fancy. Hey, I made mushrooms. Um, anyway, that's a perfect little mushroom. It's really cute. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Okay, so, um, but these brushes are super versatile, versatile and you don't have to work hard to get that little brushy look. Um, this is such a really versatile brush to have. It will base, it will make um, antiquing techniques, it will shade, it will highlight, it will make flower petals and mushrooms. Who knew? Who knew? Okay, so now I'm going to just tap the bottom against the base down there and then pinch out my water. You never want to let your water pool in these kinds of brushes because they will get wrecked. Set it off to the side. I know that that's one that I have to clean. Now when you get into the smaller size, um, and when you get these brushes, they have a hard um, uh, sizing on them. So you just want to rinse it when you first get it and rinse that sizing out. That's just to keep them shaped. And if you want to, um, when you get your brushes washed, you can use a little bar of soap and just rub it on the bar of soap and then shape them and that soap will harden. Now, what you want to be careful of is use a different bucket for rinsing them off before you use them because that soap will break down your paint if you paint with it. Okay, so if you're in one of these brushes and you load your paint, okay, so I've just dampened the brush. What it will also do is if you do strokes, you'll go here and then you can twist and lift and you can make cute little petals. Okay, so you can totally do all kinds of effects. You can also, if you're not really into stroke work, you can use the chisely edge and make some nice grass. Um, evergreen needles, um, fur, that kind of thing. So that's a really nice way that you can use this brush. I'm just gonna tap that clean. Um, Linda asked why not use hand sanitizer to clean your brushes? Um, you can. Okay. You can, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's so funny. We've gone through so many years of COVID and um, I just forget about hand sanitizer <laughs> for painting. You know, it's not something that I've ever brought into my, I've always just used the alcohol. Right, okay. Yeah. Some of the hand sanitizer has like moisturizers. And uh, yeah, that's a good point. I wouldn't want to use. Yeah, Dustin is reminding me that some of them have um, different products in them, like moisturizers and things like that. So you might not yeah. want to use that because of yeah, those reasons. Point. Okay, where are we going next? All right, um, next, what is a filbert brush? Okay, a filbert brush is basically that same brush that I just showed you. Um, that is another name, so it's a glaze. Filbert is the cut of it. It's just an oval cut. Um, they get into dry brushes, and um, this is also a filbert cut, but they've taken the filbert cut, which is the oval, and then they've shaved it. And um, why don't I go here next mm -hmm. because this is an interesting technique. This is very much like this glaze brush or this filbert brush. Um, filberts, generally speaking, will make your um, petals and stroke work and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm gonna pinch out the water. This is an interesting technique called dry brushing. And boy, I wish, this is, make sure you watch our videos online because we go into each of these techniques when we're doing a whole project a little bit more mm -hmm. clearer to see it. It's hard to cover this much um, material in a video and then actually do all the things with it. All right, so I'm gonna take my dry brush. I pinched out the water. I'm going to load against, I'm gonna switch around so I can get to the non-wet side. I want this to be dry. So I'm gonna load. And when you're dry brushing, you actually keep loading, 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 just in the edge. And eventually, after a minute or two, you end up with a ridge of paint across the top and a very flat ridge there. And then what you can do with that is you can take and you can do this very, very dry technique where it, you can highlight whole things with this just dry, 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 dry strokes. Okay, so it's feathering and um, if I was, 
if I wanted, so this is a subdued white and it's got a little bit of wood grain texture. If I wanted to make a highlight in the middle of that, I would do this technique and then just tickle that right in the middle of those letters and that would not make a sudden stop and start mark. It would make it so you could feather it. And feathering is always a good thing to be able to do. It's super fun. We need to do a project on that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna wash that brush. And always pinching out with the um, motion towards the tip. Never pulling in, ever, ever. Don't mess with those tips. Um, let's do the feathering brush, the maroon one. That's ah, a, good. New, a new brush. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and grab my already opened. So these are the <clears throat> new feathering brushes, and we use that. I wish I had the cow print here. Um, this, You know, it's really interesting. I'm realizing this as I'm talking about these brushes is they um, were doing an awful lot of stuff that's feathering <clears throat> and making a streak. The streaks are what, so streaks are what make your painting more deep. And look at magically, here's the cow print. Thank you. Okay, so ask and you shall receive, right? Um, this feathering effect right here was done with these brushes. So depending on how big or how small, um, this is um, just layered. And if you can see that it's streaky, and then a little bit stronger at the top. So that's what these brushes will do. That actually is what both of these brushes will do too. So you really have a lot of ways that you can get a feathered look. This one is a little bit more strong feathering. These are gonna be a little bit more scratchy. And then the White Wonder will also do it, but it's gonna be way more beard, hair kind of situation. I'll show you that in just a minute. So that is what this brush will do. So when you are doing this, you're going to not put it in water because it's kind of thicker. And you can wash with it as well. Blot it off. And then you can just take this and you can kind of just streak that. Now one thing about painting on paper, paper is super thirsty and it doesn't have a sealer on it. So that paint is just sucking, all the moisture in my paint is sucking and sticking to that paper. So when you see like these strong um, chisely lines, that's, they're there because it's on paper. But you can also turn them on their edge and do a completely different look. Super fun for like a gnome beard or something like that, grasses, all the things. So you could, by alternating how you stroke your brush, you can totally make a completely different effect. Be careful when you are arching. Sometimes it's harder to arch against the other side of you. So you, sometimes you just need to um, come over here and um, turn your project around. And then you'll get a nice, lovely little arch. Okay, so I'll <clears throat> clean that guy. When we're talking about the size of brushes, we had some questions about the numbers. So how do you know when you're looking at a number if you were shopping online mm -hmm. rather than actually having yeah. it in your hands. Um, the bigger the number, it, now some of them are in like three quarters, mm -hmm. so that's the portion of an inch that it is. So the more of your inch, so if it's three quarters of an inch, then that's going to be three parts of your four, so you know it's going to be bigger than a one quarter. Mm -hmm. So one quarter is only one part of your, your inch. So um, that's how you tell that. And then the other ones are by, like this is a, well this is, a, and then they break the system. Okay, so this is a number one, and it's the big guy, right? Well, I think that's a one inch, right? It is a one inch, yes. yeah. But it says number one, and then these go, well, and these are actually, oh, this is my, so this is a 10, this is a three quarter. They're all over the charts here. Yeah, so typically um, it is the lower the number, the smaller the brush. That's what it's supposed to be. However, we've just broken the entire system with yes. this set right here. Yeah. Sorry about that. I know. Sorry about that. Um, we didn't invent the fire, right? You know, right? We're, <laughs> we're just dealing with it. Okay, let's talk about Mr. White Wonder here. I think that this is a brush that everybody needs in their toolkit for all the reasons. Okay, so this is, and I actually have one. We will go ahead and just dirty. I've got a little one. 
The little one has been hard to get. Mm -hmm. So we're in this um, three quarter inch one right now, but we love him. Okay, so he, I don't know why he's a he, um, he is cut like a filbert, okay? And then he is got that, when you get your hair thinned out with like the, 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 the thinning shears, the teeth, yeah. yeah, he's got that going on right there. So um, he's got just really thin up here and then a nice big body down here. Okay, so we're gonna pick up some paint, we're gonna thin it out. The number one reason that I use this brush is for spattering. Okay, so I load that. And then with spattering, I, this one is almost worth owning just to have the handle. You want a big, thick, heavy handle when you're spattering. So I'm gonna test off over here and just kind of flick off the excess. What I love about this, you can use a toothbrush to spatter, but you generally speaking get trajectories and then it's just not pretty. So if I want to spatter snow all over the place, then I come way up high and you'll see that it spatters evenly, no trajectory, okay? Mm -hmm. So then if I wanted to go with some focus, you can do that as well just by changing your spatter technique. So we're gonna pretend like we're gonna spatter in this area. Not pretend, we're gonna actually do it. Okay, so what I do when I do that, if it's a big area like that, I anchor this brush, okay? And how high it is is how wide you'll spatter. The lower the brush, the closer you are to what you're spattering, and that gives you more control. So I'm gonna start here. Do one, <laughs> did you see that great big glob? <laughs> Something felt suspicious. Okay, so I'll start way up here. And I can spatter like within that circle. Now you'll always get a couple that'll go outside, but mostly you can see that we isolated all those spatters. So then we can go over here and we'll make a smaller one. So this is the control that you can get with this brush and you can't get it with the toothbrush. You can't get it with these other tools. So now I'm going to lower the bridge a little bit. More water there. It's got to be like ink. Always, always test off on your palette. Okay, so now I'm going to lower him and I'm going to go. And you can see that we have a great concentration right where I want it instead of all over the place. So those are the ways that you can use this. However, but wait, there's more. This is a magic brush, you guys. Everybody needs this one in their toolkit and then you need to practice using it. Okay, so say you are painting Santa, painting, I don't know, grass, painting whatever that has like flowing things to it, okay? So now you're gonna choke up on your handle. Um, the way that you control your brush, I'm gonna use this paintbrush. If I'm way back here, I'm gonna have really loose, um, soft strokes. If I choke up on it, I'm going to have control. And then this is, uh, da, da, da. let's go on here. So I have to be able to plunge the brush. Okay, so I have to be able to go up and down. If I don't have room and my hand is small, my hand is small, I can go up here and this will give me extra plunging ability and give me a little bit more um, control by getting my hand up on something else. You could use a block of wood. Um, they call these things bridges. So you can totally get up here and that'll give you a longer stroke because when I'm down here, I can only go as far as my hand will move. So a bridge sometimes is a good way to go. I hope you guys are liking this. Will you give us a little heart, give us a little hug, a little high five, whatever we're allowed to give. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> so when you want to make some Santa fur. Okay, so what you can do is you get choked up on it and then you can just go here like this and you're gonna make this beautiful Santa fur. And it's like a million little liner brushes all strapped together working in unison. It is magic. It gives you so, like, if you were if you were gonna make like some cute little evergreen boughs to decorate in your stuff, you know, you would, if you were using a liner brush, basically I don't have one right here. If you're using your liner brush, you do one needle, 
two needles and <laughs> three is bad. Um, so when you're doing it like this, so we'll pretend that we have like a, a line and then we'll give ourselves some bows. Now I can go in here and I can make pine needles in bulk. Flip it around. So now you can do that in a really quick way and you can do your beard in bulk as well. And it makes such a difference. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we have the <clears throat> um, duster stippler and the dome brush left. Okay. Duster stiplers, cheap brush, brilliant brush. You gotta have a duster stippler. Um, I don't say, I don't notice if you noticed, but I didn't say with the filbert, gotta have. I didn't say with the dry brush, gotta have. Although I would have the number one of the um, oval glaze, is, which is, it changes to oval glaze once it gets this big. I would have this, I keep this in my kitchen drawer and whenever I need to patch paint in my house or tri paint trim or varnish a little spot, I take this brush out because it gets ginormous and it will cover like nobody's business. I love this brush. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go here. This one you're going to use dry. Um, you can also wet it, but when you get really big, chunky brushes like this, you basically want to keep them dry. So I'll go into the black paint. Just tap off the excess. So we're going to pretend like this is a snowman texture. Okay, so there is your perfect snowman texture. And now you've made a snowball out of black. What yeah. can I say? So, but then if you wipe off all that paint, you could also do some antiquing. So pretend like we're over here, on the edge of our project. You can do little antiquing stuff. You can also do some highlighting, okay? And whenever you have new brushes that are these kinds of bristly brushes, you're always gonna lose hairs. If you lose hairs and something seems wrong, we always stand by our brushes because I know that they're made well, just sometimes the glue isn't there and it doesn't do its thing. So just know that we do stand by our stuff. But look at how you would never expect to be able to go from this texture here to this smooth, wonderful fade. If you were painting something with a, like a big um, crock or something like that, and you needed to highlight the middle of it, super easy. There's like, you know, I can close my eyes and I can do this and it doesn't matter what I've done. It's gonna work great. So super awesome. Um, and we also used that one on the recent video where you made the, um, the rust. The rust. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the great sawdust. Rust. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that was the base Cody. Technique. Here is Mr. Snowman, a tall porch leaner. All of this texture here, you could do it with a sponge, but I really do like this, um, um, tell me the name. Duster Stippler. Duster Stippler, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, better. I think it makes a much more even technique, and I don't want a spongy looking snowman. I want a snowy looking snowman. Yeah. So um, he's, aw, isn't he cute? He's cute. He's so cute. Um, There's a video on YouTube for that. When we were talking about the oval glaze, we had a question is, what is glaze? Ah, glaze, that's a really good question. Um, glazing is almost exactly like um, putting on blush on your makeup. Okay, so if you, are, if you are going out on the town and it's gonna be dark out, you might, um, you might be pouncing on your blush, but if you're daytime, you might just put a little tint, a little hint, mm -hmm. and that is glazing. Okay. Um, what is the Mezzaluna brush for? And the Mezzaluna, we don't, don't have these have out here. Um, we were using those a lot for um, fine dry brushes. Here's one. Uh, there, I think. That's how you ah, I yeah. think he might be right. Yeah. Okay, so he is... They're all he's today. They're all he's. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so... Can you let me fix your hair real quick? Your hair, your hair, thank you. You had it, oh, it's still up. You look like alfalfa. <laughs> there we go, you got it. <laughs> Some days. <sighs> okay, so this is an extremely firm little brush and he's super tight and tiny. 
And what you can do with this guy, this is a pretty neat deal. This is like um, the like this brush, but in tiny. So if I was highlighting lettering, if I was highlighting the tips of um, some flower petals and I wanted that soft look, if I was highlighting a bird wing, um, something like that, I would take this brush and I would do this with it. So I'm gonna pick up some fresh black paint. Pick up a little bit of this. And then we're gonna offload it just like, it's very much like the dome brush. It's just skinny, okay? So wipe that all off, offload. And then when you come here, you can get a nice skinny, whoops, that paper towel is linting on me. A nice skinny, I wiped off too much, but that will make it soft. So see, as if I keep with it, do you see that it's building and building? Then I can go into just a little bit more, not wipe so much. And then I can accent within what I've done. So you can build your layers. So it's like a good ombre brush. Um, it's a good lettering brush. It's a good accent brush. It's when this is too fat, you go to this. And even though this is really tiny, it's still fatter than this brush. Mm -hmm. So this is for skinny things. And you, if you do lettering and DIY at all, you need at least one so that you have it in your arsenal. I think, and this is a really good time of year, guys, to be like, make your list, show it to your husband or your significant person who's going to buy you significant presents <laughs> and be like, here, you know, these are the brushes I need. You know, it's such a great thing to have in your toolbox. You know, we always get our guys the drills and the saws yeah. and, and the, you know, sets of screwdrivers and stuff. There's a reason they need all those sets of screwdrivers. It's because each size is significant. Okay. Where are you at next? Um, what is a round flat brush? Just because it sounds confusing. It's round. Mm -hmm. Is it round or is it flat? <laughs> uh, it's round. <laughs> it's round and I saw I, one over here. here. I've moved things now. Now I can't remember where that ah, is. So a round brush and they have discontinued. This is my favorite mm -hmm. current round brush and they have discontinued. If you want these things, please buy them when you see them because I cannot tell you every day I get an email about something being discontinued every single day. Um, it's either discontinued or the price doubled, you know, and that is what we're finding right now is it's, it's tough. Yeah. Okay. So with a round brush, a round brush will do round things, which sounds ha 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 funny. Okay. So a round brush, what it's good for is it will make like a line, if you balance it on its toe, it will make, you know, pretty little stroke things. If you push on it a little harder, it will make like pretty little commas. And I did not lift that up well. I haven't practiced a comma stroke for a long time. And you use that one to do um, drop shadow by hand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, drop shadow brush, yes. And then, but if you wanted to make it into a flat brush for like basing a small area, you flatten it in your paint and then it will make a nice flat straight, you know, and you wanna pull it in the direction of its bristles. So if you need to base something in and have some flat control, mm -hmm. this will make it into a flat brush. And um, you need a good round brush or yeah. a good liner brush. We have the Mighty Fine Liners. Um, they're super great for fine detail. Um, they're the individual fur brush. Yes. Um, yeah, and so that's what you need for fine. Uh, but you need a good round, and I will let you know when I find a replacement for this and one. I, I don't use the rounds very often, but I like to use the rounds for the I didn't catch my mistakes fast enough because yeah. they're so thin that I can go in with my base coat color and just kind of clean up a little bit. And so there. that's an interesting thing. I actually want to show you another trick. Um, for that, let me look for a likely candidate. Um, if you have a lot of texture in your background, so for instance, we've got the plaid mm -hmm. and we've got the um, sweater pattern back there, it's difficult to fix. So you want to watch our videos on how to fix your bleeding under yeah. in real time because that you, if you catch it right away, you're not going to have to do the thing. Um, let's go, we'll go here and pretend with this guy. 
<clears throat> so the color Patty's getting out is our number 18. It's like the Christmas color. Yes, it is. Everything on the wall behind Patty is you has used 18. <laughs> um, I live for burgundy. What can I say? Okay, so this little guy is an angle shader, okay? And um, this is a really good size for the technique that Carrie was talking about. So what she was saying is if, if pretend, we've got some strokes on top of here, draw, with your brush dry, you can go into the round, and then you could go right around that block, mm -hmm. feather it in a little bit, no pressure on the brush, just on its tippy toe, and you could correct a bleed and then that would be a really good way to do that. You can also, with a lot less control, do the same thing with the angle. So what you do is you just pick up a little bit on its toe, okay? Blend it. And what it does by blending it, can you see that, Dustin, at all? You get a strong edge right there, and then it'll fade out um, into your background. So it's a nice technique for say you're coming around um, this guy right here, it will blend in your fix. And because it's not round and because you blended it over here, it won't leave behind a chunky edge. Mm -hmm. uh, the chunky edges, both when you're stenciling and when you're fixing things or when you're patching things, those are always ugly. So try to avoid those if you can. And sometimes what I'll do if I'm getting chunky stuff, I'll do the thing and then touch it to get rid of the chunk. Yeah. So that's an, another neat little fix. All right, one more question and then we're gonna get to our bestie. Yeah. Our bestie our, brush. Yeah, um, our bestie brushes. So <clears throat> would you use a brush to apply wax or just the sponge? So that's an interesting question because in the world of chalk paint, everybody's with the wax brush, with the big giant round wax brush. If I was doing a piece of furniture that had a lot of doweling and and finials and um like wood carving kind of looking things and i would totally use a round big giant one of these brushes if i was using a flat board and whatever i would totally sponge every time every single time um it's just gonna go faster it's like so fast to wipe that on mm -hmm. and not mess around with getting streaks and doing all this stuff with the right with the big brush so that's all right, dum, dum brush time. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, so dome brushes. Um, I did not put the one in there that the three eighths. Yeah, so, so I the three eighths out. is out. Um, I do believe if it's not here today, it's gonna be here tomorrow because I have an email. Um, so watch for that. I think, is our sale just today though? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sorry guys. Um, but um, then they'll be back in stock and then we can work on that. Um, dome brushes. If you are a um, stenciler, if you are somebody that wants to add, you know, that fade that we showed over here um, with this kind of look, you can do that with this. You can stipple and make some snow. It's not going to be as wide as this one that we did, but it's going to do a lot of really fun things. Okay, so with our stenciling. The number one thing that we use these brushes for is for stenciling. And so what you want to do, use a buffalo plaid. You will pick up your dry paint. You will pick it up on your dry brush and you will go to your dry paper towel and offload. I do a couple of swirls, usually five-ish. So there's a couple ways that you can paint and one of them is going to be stipple with this brush. So you just tap up and down. When I have a freshly loaded brush, I stipple light. Okay, so I don't do this because you can see the difference between that and that. Okay, so I just tap, tap, tap. This is called stippling. Okay, so go there. And then because I did that big glom thing, I'm gonna have to cover that all up with more and more coats. So you wanna be careful that you have consistent pressure. So if you're heavy handed, be heavy handed everywhere. But I will tell if you are heavy handed, you run more risk of bleeding under. So if you are, and you know if you are, if you are heavy handed, then you wanna be the person that spends twice as much time over here because if you're gonna push really hard, 
you're going to mess up your painting. So if you know you are, just spend twice as much time offloading. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with it. I am actually a heavy handed painter. Um, so that, that is my style. It's my personality. If you can even imagine. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Like you can be heavy handed. Yeah. Just take the precaution. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you know your lead foot, use your cruise control, right? So, okay. So now the other way that we use these is we swirl. So we're going to come over here. Swirling is the best. And the reason it's the best is because it's not exhausting. When you are pound, 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 it is exhausting to do. I do not like to stipple for my stenciling. I, I do notice though when I swirl, I do feel it in my forearm. Okay. So there's, it's like kind of a, yeah. you can feel it in different places in your arm, especially if you're not used to. If you're just starting to swirl, to swirl, yeah. like, hmm. Huh, hmm, yeah. I'm a little bit achy yeah. right there, yeah. Well, it depends also on how big your project, some of these tall porch signs, um, but that is when you watch the video of how to use your roller yes, absolutely. to base coat there. So there's so many, this is why we're here, so that you guys don't have to think it up yourself. I have, I personally have been painting for 34 years um, since my youngest son, Chris, was born. And I have taught since about the year after I started. I have sold, done all the things. So I've been doing this and trade shows and taught all around the country and all that stuff. So now I'm just doing it online. Um, so know that I'm passing these things on to you so that you have the easiest way to um, to paint. Okay, so when we look at these, we can see that that's super, super awesome and even, and then that has, it needs more work to be done with it. Um, but I could dry my brush off a little bit more. Okay, and now I can come over here, and I can start like in the middle and then make bigger, 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 bigger circles. And so I can do little highlighty things. I can also go over here Pretend I want to frame my artwork. I'm gonna go off the paper. I'm gonna start heavy in the corners. And then I'm gonna lighten my touch. And see how beautifully that's blended. Um, I don't know if you can appreciate this or not, but the, the way that I have painted in the past to get that amount of fade with that amount of subtle beauty is almost impossible. You're gonna use a big flat brush, you're gonna do some pouncing, you're gonna be blending with the mop, you're gonna do all these other things, you're gonna use mediums. I'm telling you how hard it is because this makes everything easy. Um, if you are stenciling with a flat brush, and if you are somebody that stencils and bleeds under your brush, if you try these, I almost wanna be like 100% guaranteed you're not gonna bleed under, it's about that. Um, so make sure that you get yourself at least one and try it because you will never go back to the other. I don't know why flat brush, I don't know why flat stencil brushes are flat. I don't understand, they don't work. Why? Um, we did have a question, okay. what dome brush do we use most? Um, I use the bigger sizes, mm -hmm. but so everybody has a, a size project that they're comfortable with. If you were painting on, um, if you were painting, let's see. Um, like, so if you're here on this size letters, you can be in these size brushes. So that's the middle sizes. If you're painting on one of these, you're gonna use a roller or you're gonna use a big dome brush. Now I will, so with that project, which is like the yeah. Christmas, the drop shadow mm, you would need the be- smaller. Yes, yeah. because that's part of the stencil. So yeah. then you would so want see how that the fits. tiny, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so you want to kind of choose. Honestly, I think you start out with a set of brushes mm -hmm. and then you see which one you're comfortable with. Um, I tend to be a bigger project person, that strong personality. Um, I lived in California, which sounds like a funny statement, but um, houses in California are generally big. And so the art that goes on the wall can be bigger. Their ceilings are higher because it's warmer there, um, that kind of thing. So. Um, depending on where you're living and what your environment is. Here on the East Coast or here in Southeast Ohio, everybody's ceilings are eight feet and their houses are generally small. So you're not gonna put ginormous art on your mm -hmm. walls. So it really does depend on who you are. Right. And um, there is no perfect for any, for everybody. Agreed. And I did want to share, when it comes to dome brushes, we have a blog post that I'll share that you guys can go look at some of our 
um, most asked questions about dome brushes, but one, a lot of the times we get, how many should I have? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be important because you can't use your dome brush until it, after you've cleaned it, until it's until completely it's dry. dry. Yep. So what we recommend is if you're a hobby stenciler, new stenciler to do the five set, that's going to the be the, piece, different, yep. yeah, the different brush, the different sizes. And then if you are painting a couple of projects a week, then you're going to want to have 20 to 25. If you are painting daily, you're likely going to want 50 or 60. Yeah, it, it really also depends if you are somebody that is going to paint a um, cool background with one color on it, mm -hmm. then you could do two brushes mm -hmm. and it would be fine. Yeah. You know, and they generally dry in a day and a half. They're never quite dry the next day. And that also depends on your weather. So if you're in a really moist environment, um, Oregon, Washington, um, on the coast, that kind of thing, your brushes are going to dry a lot faster. Um, I got off the plane in Arizona to go travel teach, and hi guys. Um, but I got off that plane and all of the moisture in my body sucked out. <laughs> and I had to drink like five things of water right away because it was so dry. Um, so if you're there, then your brushes are going to dry by the next day. So once again, it just always yeah. is determined by where you are, who you are, and what you're doing. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I think that is a lot of it's a lot of information it's a lot of information make sure you go check the brushes out um they are a deal today some of them are a really good deal so you want to make sure that you get those deals while you can yeah all right all right see you on tuesday and thanks for joining us